Pixar Animation Studios is renowned as one of the leading 3D animation film studios today, with their movies being both worldwide commercial and critical hits. What most people don't know is that a completely separate studio called Circle 7 Animation was originally put in charge of producing Pixar film sequels without their involvement. Let's dig into the history of this studio, their planned Pixar sequels, and why they were opened and later closed by Disney. In early 1999, Pixar's John Lasseter was on a press tour promoting Pixar's second film, A Bug's Life. Lasseter had served as director for the studio's first two films, and he was looking forward to a long break away from Pixar to spend time with his family. During this time, Pixar was hard at work with what was to be a direct-to-video sequel to Toy Story. But when Michael Eisner, CEO of Disney at the time, saw reels from that film, they decided to release it theatrically instead. Nine months before the release of Toy Story 2, Lasseter arrived back at Pixar. Upon reviewing what was completed of the sequel, he made a very difficult decision. He decided that the film wasn't up to Pixar's standards and that nearly the entire thing needed to be rewritten and reanimated. Disney disagreed and wouldn't push back the release date, but Lasseter refused to release the film as it was. Those nine months were some of the most notorious and hectic in all of Pixar history, but the reworked sequel ended up being an enormous hit. At the time, Disney had a deal with Pixar dating back to the original Toy Story. Pixar was to produce five original animated motion pictures for Disney, who would also own all characters that Pixar developed. Toy Story 2 was Pixar's third film, but a disagreement arose between the head executives of Pixar and Michael Eisner about whether or not the film would count towards the five-picture deal. Eisner argued that because the film was a sequel, it did not count towards one of the five original pictures that Pixar was obligated to produce for Disney. John Lasseter, Ed Catmull, and Steve Jobs all disagreed. This led to the deterioration of the relationship between Pixar and Disney. Eisner decided to pull the plug entirely on Disney's relationship with Pixar after the release of Finding Nemo, a move that angered most of Disney's board members and shareholders. Disney still owned all of Pixar's original characters, though, and Eisner opened up Circle 7 Animation in 2004, specifically to produce sequels to Pixar films. Shortly after this announcement, Laster is quoted to have said, It's like you have these dear children, and you have to give them up to be adopted by convicted child molesters. Circle 7 Animation immediately started work on the sequels to Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., and Finding Nemo. Not much is known about the Circle 7 script for Finding Nemo 2, but unconfirmed sources indicate that it would have been a role reversal, with Marlin getting lost and Nemo searching for him. In this version, Dory was even supposed to regain her memory at the end of the film. The Circle 7 script for Monsters, Inc. 2, titled Lost in Scaradice, would have been about Mike and Sully traveling to the human world to find Boo upon learning that she had moved away. Circle 7's Toy Story 3, by coincidence or not, would have featured many similarities to what became the final film. It would have supposedly opened with Buzz Lightyear's character being sent to Taiwan by Andy's mom to fix a malfunction. The toys would soon realize that an international recall had been issued on all Buzz Lightyear's, so the rest of the gang traveled to save him. While at the factory, Buzz realized that all the defective toys were being destroyed by a giant machine, so he tried several times to escape, all unsuccessful. While on the way to save Buzz, the rest of the toys would have gotten trapped at a daycare. They eventually escaped by building a machine from a shopping cart, a vacuum, and a few balloons. Finally, the group arrived to save Buzz, but it was nearly too late. Buzz was injured by the giant machine, and the rest of the group had to repair him. Along the way, Buzz and the group would have met other recalled toys, including a different Star Command action figure and even a large stuffed bear. Michael Eisner's decision to cut ties with Pixar was so unpopular that it majorly contributed to his decision to step down in 2005. He was replaced as CEO by then-Disney president Bob Iger. Iger knew that he had to restore Disney's relationship with Pixar, and long story short, Disney bought Pixar for $7.4 billion in 2006. This deal put Pixar sequels back into the hands of the studio, who would remain its own separate studio as opposed to being merged with Walt Disney Animation Studios. Circle 7 Animation was shut down less than a month after the Pixar acquisition by Disney was finalized in May 2006. 136 out of the 168 employees at Circle 7 Animation were absorbed into Walt Disney Animation Studios. Pixar went on to create their own sequels, intentionally ignoring the work done by Circle 7, allegedly going so far as to not even read any of their scripts or look at any of the concept art generated by Circle 7. Pixar released Toy Story 3 in 2010, 
Monsters University in 2013, and Finding Dory in 2016. So, what do you think? Would you like to see Circle 7 animation sequels, or do you like Pixar's versions? Was Disney right to open Circle 7, and would you have liked to see Pixar continue totally separate from Disney? Let us know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe for more episodes of Disney Declassified.